Hello, welcome to Terra Prime Live. I'm Zathos, and this is Thalon. Hello, hello. Uh, today we are going over the three P's, patience, persistence, and perseverance. Um, we have a panel of our Alexis here today. The All of us are Alexis within the Terra Prime Lightsaber Academy program. Uh, just go and introduce, introduce the panel to you to start off with. Uh, we have uh, Eric. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, great to be here, and uh, yeah, it's uh, awesome that you're uh, taking point on this. Thank you. Uh, we have Gary. Hi, Gary. Hello, gentlemen. How are you? Uh, doing well. How are you? Well, how are you? I'm doing good. Uh, we have Michael as well. Good, I'm from Germany. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> good, good. It's been good. And then we have Robert as well. Hello, Robert. Good evening. How are you today? We're doing well. We're doing well. Excellent. So uh, we thought that we would start the um, we start the the chat with the basic talks of persistence, or sorry, patience. Uh, or pa persistence is second. Uh, patience is first. So um, talking about patience and what patience means to us as uh, people who are training, and what and what you could take from it. Uh, while you are applying your training, and it applies to every form of training, whether you're training with a saber or whether you're training with unarmed combat or sword as well. So, uh, for me, patience is about um, making sure that you always go slowly, um, that you always build from your basics, and you always stick to your basics, and make sure that um, your basics are a focus whenever you're working. Scott. Um, I have to agree with that too. Um, taking things slowly, uh, making sure that you can build the uh, the the proper uh, muscle memory as you're going through things, so that uh, you can do it perfectly when you're going slow. Uh, so when you start moving faster, it just it builds more speed, more accuracy. Um, perfect technique. Um, Eric, how about you? Well, um, yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, uh, my take is before I joined uh, TPLA, uh, I was a wild man, <laughs> <laughs> a barbarian. Um, then I learned about the the patience aspect and uh, w not learned about. Hang on, but, uh, Excuse me. Not not yet, buddy. We're live here. Um, well, I so uh, yeah learned that patience was uh, absolutely necessary. That these things are going to take months to learn um, and perfect, and and even longer to to truly master. So so it's okay if. Uh, you know, for a couple of weeks, it's not working out, and uh, you, you can um, you can just uh, get to snobby. Um, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Patience is absolutely necessary in this game, and um, it just realizing it's it's going to take a while, and and that's okay. It it makes uh, makes it a lot easier. Absolutely. Um, Gary, how about you? What does patience mean to you in training? Uh, this is an interesting one, actually, because, I mean, this is an ongoing one for me, which is kind of, I suppose, on point with the theme. <laughs> um, in a sense, kind of echoing everything that, you know, the previous panelists and yourselves have said, you know, it, it is, things are going to take a long time. That is something which I'm, you know, having to deal with myself at the moment, the, the, the idea that I'm not going to get everything straight away. I'm not going to be able to do everything straight away. Um, I've got a be realistic with what I expect of myself and realize that what I'm doing here, what we're all doing here, is a long-term commitment. It's not something that we're going to be doing in a few hours, a few days, or even a few weeks. Um, and, and as Eric said, you know, that, that's all right. That's perfectly fine. You know, and it's being patient is, for me, is about accepting that and, uh, in a sense, just enjoying the journey that we're on. Um, you know, looking at where I've come from, the things that, you know, that were impossible for me five months ago that I'm doing now, and, and sort of looking realistically at what I want to do for the future, but having that, that sort of patience to say, no, it's fine, I'm, I'm getting there, I just have to take things slowly and, you know, progress little bit by little bit, and, you know, every little thing is a step towards where I want to be, ultimately. So true. There's, there's so much that we're, uh, I've noticed with, uh, with Dave and myself here, so much that we've just picked up um, over the last like year and a bit there that's just been 
crazy past what we were able to do before, and we've been sparring with each other for years, right? So this is uh, absolutely fantastic that way. The patience aspect is huge for that. Uh, Michael, how about you? Same with me. It's uh, When I started out, I, I had no experience at all with swordplay, and uh, I saw these fantastic doulons by Master Anonymous, and uh, I went into it and thought, well, after four or five weeks, here it is. What is next? And then uh, uh, I started to think about going into Soriso, and uh, I, I was kind of, uh, well, what's the, what's the, Okay, forget it. Not so important. But uh, when 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 they when they um, put my focus into footwork, just it was just one example. They told me some things to watch, and um, it really took a long time to implement them. And uh, that was when I realized that when you when you are setting goals in, in swordplay, it, it, you're not talking about days, you're talking about weeks, you're talking about months, and especially when you have zero experience. So that's the, the point about patience you've all mentioned uh, in your view. And what patience also means for me is that when I, I'm setting up for training, I always try to have at least 45 minutes available for me. So I don't want to rush into things. I don't want to. Uh, I, I I want to have the feeling that I have all the time. I need to do the things I I want to do. And so, uh, kind of, some I know some of you go into a meditation or some kind of these things. Uh, so just this feeling. Um, I have all the time I need. Getting into it and being patient with yourself, in a, all aspects. <laughs> That's for me. I hear you on that one there. It's uh, it's easy to get discouraged if you don't have enough time for it. Making that time is a huge choice and a huge commitment to do. It's, uh, it's awesome. Um, Robert? Um, patience, to me, is a function of taking the time that you need to learn what is necessary. Um, don't be so eager to rush into that next step. Um, there is a point in the time when you have to say, okay, I've got enough of this basic down to move on, but rushing it, moving into it before you're ready, um, creates frustration. It creates that that mental block in your head saying, oh my god, I can't get it. And it's not because you don't get it, it's because you never took long enough to let the concrete set in the foundation. So it's a matter of patience. It's a matter of taking the time to, to move forward. And for me, mine has been um, it, it just taking the time to, to, to take the time, and maybe that's where, where some people are at. Um, my, my patience, I, I, I could outlast almost anything. Uh, sometimes it t actually takes me some, uh, some kick in the pants, so, so to speak, to get me moving. Um, so sometimes having the right amount of patience is just as important as having the patience as well. Yeah, I definitely agree <clears throat> with that. I think that um, a, taking the time and making and making the time is a is a big thing as well. And that uh, that to me falls under both uh, patience and persistence because your 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 life um, will always get in the way. There's always something that can happen to make it so that you can't train. Um, you know, you can get a cold, or you can hurt yourself, or you, or kids, or work, kids. or whatever happens, whatever that happens to be. And you have, as somebody who's training, um, you have to make sure that you are making the time for yourself. Um, from from a, from a perspective of somebody who I, I don't have any kids, but I have a job that's pretty demanding, and um, I play a lot of sports, so. I get into that time frame where, you know, I'm playing on two two different soccer teams. I'm working 40 hours in a week. It makes it very hard for me to um, to get out there and train. So I'm I've made myself um, 
a promise and a pact for myself to train when I'm at work. Um, finish at the end of my day when I'm done work, regardless of how bad the day's been, regardless of how I'm feeling or whatever it is, I have a space at work that I can use, I'm going to use it. And that's about being persistent in, in the training. And more often than not, when I train down there, all I do is all I do is basics. I do footwork, I do shicho strikes, I do shicho blocking, and then I start working on a dulong, whether it's the makashi dulong that I've currently been tasked to learn, or whether it's the shicho dulong that I need to continuously remember. Um, and I go through those two. And sometimes Scott comes down and works with me because we work in the same building. And in, in that case, sometimes we work the Ataru Duolong, which he's been tasked to learn. So, um, and we'll and we train together. And we have a great bonus that we have somebody to fall back on to make sure that we are being persistent. Yes. Um, <laughs> they're they're there to poke us and prod us and make sure that that we have somebody to uh, to train with or to remind us that hey, you should really be working on that. Um, I think that within the program. I uh, hope I'm not alone, but I think that within the program, the we all kind of reach reach out to that, um, and everybody everybody's there to to help everyone else and make sure that we're all kind of staying on point. I have uh, two things to add, if I may. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, first off, uh, this is no race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, absolutely. And secondly, uh, and secondly uh, concerning the forms, uh, you just mentioned Taru before. Um, one aspect of patience for me is uh, uh, really trying to to get. I, I'm I'm still not stuck, but I'm still with form to Makashi. I started with Chicho. Now I'm into Makashi. The TPLA system is kind of a progressive uh, system where you uh, have to learn the basics of each form to go to the next one. And this is a point for me that is very important uh, and where where my patience is not as strong as I. Uh, as I like, I, I would like to rush into Sarisa or Ataru or something like that, but I restrict myself. I say, okay, Makashi first, till you feel, till you really feel uh, comfortable with it, and then move on to Sarisa. Just this form issue. Yeah, no, no, I understand that one. That I definitely do. Um, I, I have that problem too. Uh, I definitely jumped ahead. Ataro is definitely the, uh, the the one that the form that resonated the most with me. Uh, so it was one of the things that I really wanted to learn a lot of first. Um, <clears throat> luckily, though, like, I, and honestly, I, I think um, I, I only get out of that a little bit in the fact that uh, I have Dave here, who is a primarily a, a Makashi-based guy. So it lets me kind of stick back to my learning back to the, the previous forms. I have someone else to really kind of train with with that. Um, no, I, with persistent stuff, I'd have to agree with um, with, with its choice. It's, it's all pure choice, pure willpower, though. We have to make that specific choice to continue doing it, even when we have all the distractions in the world against us to, to be able to train, being able to just do that. Um, for me, that's uh, using my kitchen, my hallway, to practice orbits in a confined space or to practice footworks in and around all of my kids. Um, I definitely uh, I, I do what I can with what space that I have, and I try to put in the equivalent of at least like half an hour to, to two hours in the day, depending on what I'm doing. Um, Eric, uh, what is persistence for you? Well, um... Uh, to me, it's um, it kind of goes kind of with the patience there. Um, the fact that these things don't happen overnight, um, it kind of, you know, you, you kind of once you, you actually do get something, uh, you can't just kind of sit on your laurels and say, yeah, okay, I nailed that. Next, uh, you have to do it for the rest of your life, pretty much, uh, if you want to keep doing it. So, um, persistence uh, is. Uh, just doing the same thing over and over and over again, and uh, and being patient about it, um, seeing it as a positive thing, and uh, and and trying to be as consistent as uh, as possible, but um, just not getting frustrated uh, either. As, as much as I actually you know find myself getting sometimes, um, realize it's fun, and then you know, everything clears up. But um, 
still, it's like, ah, yeah, you, you forget about the, uh, you forget, you know, to be persistent about it, and, um, you know, it's the, it's the only, it's the only way we're really gonna, you know, get ahead, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a really important thing to remember, uh, if you don't want to get frustrated, uh, doing this, and, you know, I, I catch myself often forgetting that sometimes, and, um, and, you know, it's, 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 I stall, um, so, We'll talk more about uh, the, the challenges later, uh, but um, yeah, it's just uh, just kind of knowing that uh, this is a very lengthy process and, and repeating, lots of repetition. Uh, just like music, I actually, um, that ties into a lot of my training in music, which we discussed in earlier programs. I have a degree in music. Here we go. Done. But um, yeah, I don't know. Um, any uh, any questions, gentlemen? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I, I put practice instead of um, persistence. So uh, when we, um, I'll be editing the title of this video. Uh, if you're looking at this right now, uh, the practice should be <laughs> persistence. Uh, I apologize for that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Gary, uh, what is persistence to you? Um, well, actually, um, before I go on to that, can I just jump back in one thing? Because something Michael said really resonated with me, and it was actually something you said as well. And this relates, because the thing is, I think a lot of these things do overlap a little bit. Um, and and it was this was something that, that kind of slipped my mind when we were talking about patients, but then suddenly I was reminded of it. And it's the, one of the, sort of the issues that I've ha had and still have is my mind kind of racing ahead of my body. Because uh, I, I seem to be able to get my head around things faster than I can actually get my body to do them, which does set up a bit of tension between the two. Because you know I have to, in a sense, be patient and wait for my body to catch up. Um, you know, so that's kind of one of the things that I've had a bit of a, a, an issue with. And for of talking about you know trying to jump ahead to other forms, the form that I kind of saw and just thought that's the coolest thing I've ever seen was Gem So. You know, seeing Master Vornach's uh, gem so is just amazing. That's the form that resonated most with me. But the thing is, I'm not ready to do it as gem so at the moment. It's it, it just looks like sort of fancy she cho in a way. Um, so it's 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 I'm constantly having to be sort of reined in and sort of say, no, no, you're not ready to do that. You have to you know do the things you're supposed to be doing. Now the persistence side of that for me is, you know basically keeping going no matter what, you know, um, I find, certainly I've found myself that it's very easy to get disheartened, it's very easy to get frustrated, especially when my, when, you know, when I find myself with a lack of patience, um, and it's very easy to hit difficulties and, and just kind of almost kind of throw a bit of a temper tantrum at it. Um, and so it's, it's really, for me, it's a case of just keeping at it, saying, okay, fine, you know, I'm having problems with this thing now, but I will get it. Eventually, I will get it. I'm not going to let it beat me. Um, and also, I think there's, for, for me, there's an element, again, of, of looking at things from a proper perspective and saying, right, okay, um, this is where I'm at. This is where I want to get to. I've got these problems to deal with, but I will, you know, with the right approach and the right amount of time, I will get there and I will get to them. And the other as aspect for me, again, is, is dedication and just saying, look, you know, this is what I've made a commitment to do. This is what I've chosen to do. You know, I've got two choices. I either do it or I don't do it. It's a bit like that, um, that sort of something actually Master Anonymous said to me one time, which is that quote from Yoda, do or do not do. There, there is no try. It's basically a case of I either do it or I don't do it. And, you know, I'm, I'm not one to let things beat me. It's very, very true. Um, it, you're right. Choice is huge in that one there. Um, Michael, your thoughts? Persistence. Um, well, it's um, for me, it is ruining my lawn. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> um, no, uh, it's uh, first thing is the persistence to go out every day. But this is not this is not it alone. Uh, you know, you can go out 45 minutes a day 
and you can achieve very little. Um, it's a matter of focus and this is a one of my uh, weak points, you know, I I often go out and enjoy what I'm doing, I enjoy a doulon or something like that. Uh, but the times where I need to pers be persistent is when I uh, have a spot where I want to, to improve and to concentrate to improve that particular point. And so um, I'm torn between persist persistence and a pride or to enjoy it. I, I, I hope you, you understand what I, what I mean. So, um, so going out alone is not persistence for me. It's only one, one point. And um, yeah, this, this thing being, being satisfied with where, where you are or where I am, this um, sometimes it, it hinders me to, to really go along. And this is where my persistence finally clicks in again. And then I concentrate on something and then I really move on. And the last point um, where I uh, persistent, where I am persistent is concerning uh, uh, fitness. I try to do push-ups and squats every day and this is something where I can say, well, there I'm really persistent uh, because I um, haven't done very much before this program. And uh, I realized that without keeping my body in, uh, in a positive state, I cannot do these things I want to do. So fitness is one aspect of persistence. Okay, I'm off. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Uh, how about you, Robert? What do you What do you think? Well, persistence, in my opinion, is it, it's an extension of of, uh, of patience. It's just a tempered form of it, in my opinion. All right, patience means you can keep going forever and ever. Um, it also tends to lead to nothing. Um, I can sit here and do nothing all day long. Um, persistence is where I take that patience and I go and achieve something with it. I put the effort forth. All right, I'm being patient. I'm understanding that I can move forward, that I can take the time to do what's necessary. But the persistence factor is making it work. Um, don't stop because a convenient excuse comes up. Don't stop because the football game's on and... You, you want to go watch the game. These these are things that we like to do, sure enough, but how much of that football game is really going to help you become a better saberist? How much of it's going to how much of that game can you affect otherwise? So why let the football you know, I got I got Tivo. I'll just let the Tivo take care of the game. I'll watch the game later. I'm gonna pick up my stick, I'm gonna swing it. That's what we're gonna do. And that's persistence to me. Perfect. Um, so we're going to move on to practice. Um, now we've all already touched on this a little bit um, as we've been talking into what our practice routines are um, a little bit. Um, so I think you know, to, to kind of give people a um, kind of an idea of what we do as LXs and what the program kind of guides us to do, then maybe we can uh, we can show that. So my, my routine is um, it's kind of like a two-week, uh, I kind of I kind of run it in almost a two-week cycle um, because we teach um, here locally and uh, one of our practice days is a teaching day. So we um, what, what I do is on the Monday following class, I, I go about prepping myself for the next class and I start the things that we had already touched on, what we're going to be teaching. And right now all we're doing is teaching she chokes. Everybody, everybody that we teach is... Um, everybody that we teach is all brand new uh, within within a couple of months less all everybody less than a year definitely um, so we I practice Shicho that's what I start with everything that I start with is always Shicho so it's always uh, footwork for at least 15 minutes um, going over all of my steps to make sure that my footwork is good and I chain them I chain them and change up and make sure that I'm being um, um, 
unpredictable in my own in my own stepping to make sure that I'm pra practicing properly. Um, I'm still trying to go slow and maintain form, um, and then I go into uh, Shicho striking, and then Shicho blocking, and then um, develop my class for the the basics of my class for the next uh, the next class in, and then I do my Makashi work. Um, my my normal training regimen after work is about an hour and a half, um, and it's definitely. Uh, I'm definitely sweating by the time I'm done um, because I, I work really hard to make sure that I'm I'm, I'm going strong and uh, part of it is, is I don't get to the gym as much as I need to so I also do a couple of laps around the garage it's a fairly large parking garage and I, I run a couple of laps and I get those in I do some squats and stuff too just to make sure that I'm keeping more trying to get myself in better shape um, it also helps that it ties back into the sports that I play as well so I do that for nine straight days when I'm working, and then on the tenth day, all I do is the stuff I'm going to be teaching at class, and then start again on day one with class. So uh, that's what my what my things. And I have a couple of days off in between because I'm not working on those days, and it's really hard at minus thirty to train outside. That's bloody hoth. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Scott. Um, training for me is. Uh, on a given day, I'm, I'm, I'm like to say I'm as structured as Dave is there, but uh, I'm not really. I, I kind of go on a day-to-day -day basis, and I pick something that I either feel that I need to work on more or something that um, I haven't worked on in a while, um, and I kind of keep, keep tabs on that as I go throughout the week uh, so that I'm not just training a specific thing solid throughout the entire week. Um, I will practice whenever, wherever I really can. Um, I will sometimes get my kids involved with it there. Uh, one of my my older son, my 13-year-old there, actually comes out and he trains uh, with us and he comes to class with us too, which is pretty awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we definitely, I, I definitely train whenever I can. I don't have, um, yeah, I don't have as much of a structure for it. I just pick something and I work on it. But it just as long as I'm making progress with it, that's, that's kind of my gauge. Uh, Eric, how about you? What is practice for you like? Well, it's um, it's very repetitive. Um, I, I lately it's been uh, tough, but um, normally I have my family obligations. Uh, so once those are all to bed, <laughs> um, out in the garage or outside, um, I prefer to be outside because I seem to have outgrown my garage uh, with what I'm doing. Um, it doesn't seem to be big enough for Makashi right now, so. I need to be outside, and basically the sun goes down and it starts to rain or snow around here, so it's it's getting kind of tricky. Um, trying to get through, you know, through, but um, I I do squats, uh, usually about ten. Um, I drop my saber a lot, so I end up doing push-ups. Therefore, I don't set any. And yes, I am honorable. If I drop my saber, I do ten push-ups. <laughs> so what you get like when you subscribe to something, anyway. Um, other than that, uh, I'm going over the Mikashi, and um, I love my, my Shicho, and um, of course my Obiani spins. I'm trying to get them down in the garage, though I, they, it's not a really uh, safe thing to do, because I usually end up breaking uh, my blade tips off by hitting stuff. And uh, yeah, so I'm just hoping for clear skies. Um, and I have gloves, and I'm all set for outside. It's, uh, you know, I live in Canada. I'm prepared to, uh, to saber in Canada outside, but it's uh, it's not an easy transition. Just, uh, I'll put it that way, especially from a nice cozy garage to this, well, the outdoors, and the outdoors are not nice. But, uh, yeah, it's just uh, really focusing on this Bakashi and uh, just doing it very slowly and uh, taking it methodically. So I'll be posting about that soon, I guess. <laughs> Um, as for more practice, I, I wish I, I, I'm kind of in a, a low spot right now, so uh, it, to me, as, lo as long as I practice footwork with just basic strikes, uh, which is what I've been doing, um, I don't let a night go where I don't pick up a saber, but I might not be focusing hard on the curriculum material I've been assigned. Uh, either way, it was the same thing in, um, in music, um, it, it at least put air through the, uh, the horn, I play bass trombone, so... Uh, you know, put air through the horn 
regardless of uh, whether you're working on something or not. You know, you'll at least you'll at least put the time in. So, might not be you know the greatest thing to do, but it's better than doing nothing. And that's what I'm uh, what I'm kind of sticking with because it's, uh, something's better than nothing. That's true. And things are getting better. <laughs> nice. I can agree with you on the uh, the cold Canada outdoors. It's uh, it's really really cold here. Uh, okay, <laughs> Carrie, what is uh, what does your practice look like? Um, well, I mean, mine is 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 fairly varied. Um, I think it's probably worthwhile um, pointing out at this point what practicing actually means to me as well, which is perhaps something that you know the rest of you guys can sort of jump in on as well. And for me, practicing is all about trying to perfect things. It's trying to you know figure out or or be pointed to what I need to work on, what I need to improve, and then, you know, Eric actually hit the nail on the head, repetition, 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 just doing it over and over and over again until eventually it becomes so ingrained and so um, almost subconscious that you don't have to think about it, you know, but it, the only way to do that is to practice things over and over and over again a hundred times, a thousand times, whatever it takes basically to, to get there. And that is kind of how I practice anyway. I mean, I, I, there's, there's lots of different things that I will do. I mean, it's interesting something Michael said. I mean, recently I've been doing much longer sessions of practice. I mean, at the moment I will tend to, I, I again practice outside because I don't have the space indoors to do it. Um, and I live in the north of the UK, which is pretty cold. Um, probably not as cold as Canada, but getting there. Uh, <laughs> you know, so um, I'll basically, I mean, I'll, I've got Shi Cho to work on. Uh, I'll do my, you know, basics, um, footwork, very, very slow accelerations on the, the Shi, Cho, Shi Cho strikes, uh, Sai, Cho, Shim, and Shak. I, I tend to do them in two ways. I, I do them both as very very slow trying to get the the arcs and the trajectories of the blade very precise but also I'll do them kind of fast and and in a sense with mean so I'm, I'm really kind of throwing the techniques as well and I sort of interchange between the two obviously there's Dulon as well so um, the Shicho Dulon, the Makashi Dulon I, I will sort of practice um, several times you know in a session if, if I can I'm a big, big fan of Saber Staff as well, um, and obviously, I, you know, um, was set a Saber Staff form a while back, which is something else that um, goes into my practice. Uh, and you know, I, I, I'm one of these people as well. I, I wasn't originally, but I love to spin the Saber around. So I always try to allow myself a little bit of fun as well, as well as doing all the sort of the the syllabus stuff and the kind of very, in a way, serious stuff. Um, I always try to allow myself a little bit of, of time to kind of goof off uh, as well and, and you know spinning the save around or you know having a sneak peek at things I perhaps shouldn't be having a sneak peek at um, <coughs> Gemso Dulon. Um, you know just just really to remind myself that hey you know this is supposed to be fun as well so as well as working hard at it I can work hard at it doing things that are you know, for me, storing up um, kind of experience for later on, in a way, so that I, I don't come into something like Seresu, for example, completely clueless. Um, and as I say, I'm doing probably about an hour and a quarter, hour and a half a day at the moment in terms of my practice. But it is all about repetition and just trying to get that skill and get it to a point where it is completely effortless. You know, that's that's kind of where I'm at. I like what you touched on there, the um, the the aspect of the the fun factor with it. That, that's ultimately what we started into all this for was like the the fun aspect there, <laughs> and keeping that alive in your in your practices are huge. Sorry. Wild man, like I said before. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> uh, Michael, uh, what is uh, what is training for you? Um. While uh, Gary said he he has a, a he, uh, he varies a lot. I have a quite fixed set of uh, practice, which I have with me for some weeks. 
Um, I always start with saber stuff, 15 minutes or so, doing some spinning, uh, doing the two doulons we uh, we we have with the with the staff. Then I go into into uh, some with a single saber into some uh, major and minor orbits just to get the, to 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 warm up. And uh, then I go into Chicho. Chicho is uh, doing some basic strikes, walking some some grass off, <laughs> uh, doing some footwork, and uh, then uh, of course uh, the Dulon, doing it a couple of times, starting uh, just um, just do it and. Uh, uh, without focus, just going into it two times, three times, and then I always do it two times, focusing on footwork, uh, looking at my stances, uh, looking at the distance, stopping at certain points, and then I go into Makashi, um, do, do practice some uh, some the, the guards, the moon guards. And then uh, I do a couple of minutes. I do the sundog, so this f kind of free exercise where you can, where you don't, where you don't have these preset um, movements like in the dulon. And then of course I also go into the dulon and try to um, to get it down. It's uh, a couple of weeks. I'm into that. It's not that long, so I, I still I'm still in, at the point of memorizing it and not think having to think about the movements and this takes time so uh, uh, when I've done it two or three times then I start to look at certain things that the master said to me and uh, I do it again focusing on that and then 45 minutes or so have passed um, I'm positively exhausted <laughs> and uh, Always very satisfied with myself. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And Robert, what about you? Uh, well, practice practice for me usually is rolled into uh, uh, an excursion to the fitness center. I, I don't have a whole lot of room here to practice with, uh, and just like you were experiencing the uh, the ten, the twenty degree weather. The sun's down, so I'm sure it's about ten degrees outside right now. Um, it's it's difficult to practice uh, unless you want to wear you know, a padded suit to keep you warm. So I take it to the fitness center and I start off with um, with some cardio work. It's you know it's not just saber. It's full body. We have to remember that with the, with the stances and the lunges and the movement and everything, we got to keep our whole body in check. So it starts with cardio. Um, then I move to the saber. Now that I'm warmed up, I'm ready to go. Um, uh, then I then I. I usually start with about 10 minutes of shicho because that is where it all starts. Um, if you know, like I said, the, the concrete has to be set before you can build your building, and that's the way I see see the shicho. Um, and then I move into um, what I'm right now working on is is makashi, and that's a step by step issue. It it it's not that I'm um, dedicated specifically to going in the orders of of the forms, but I think that they do build on each other. Um, I go back to um, to the Sori Su Basics, and I see a lot of Makashi in it. I see a lot of the high guard, and I see a lot of the the moon guards in in the orbits, and in in a, in a, in a sense. Um, so it's just a matter of taking the time, flowing through the practice step by step, um, not being in a hurry to get finished. Um, I, I try to make sure I have about two hours set aside for this. Um, I don't get to go every day, regretfully. I, I admire you guys with the dedication that you can go every day, but I know that I um, I only get to go about three times a week. Um, sometimes it depends on what the boss has to say. I get to stay late, and I have to I have to regretfully cancel. But I have I have stuck to the schedule I have. Um, just it's practice. It, it's you got to get there and get in that mindset. Um, it seems a little weird to be in public swinging a glowing stick. They get over it, and uh, and I don't have a problem with it. So that's that's my practice. Nice. Um, we skipped one of the uh, the P's there. We kind of interchanged one there. We have uh, one last P to cover, which is 
Perseverance. Um, Dave, you want to start us off with this one? Um, so, <clears throat> perseverance is to um, continue to practice and and continue to train through the through adversity, through the, the kind of hardships that you might have in your life, and the things that the things that might try to get in your way. Um, so, for me, <clears throat> for me, the the biggest the biggest thing that I that I personally persevere through having no real large family life or anything that, that get in my way is uh, I have I have a health condition <clears throat> that causes me to be very immobile uh, from time to time um, and um, to the point where I can barely stand um, my perseverance is to find ways to train when they hurt um, I have gout uh, so I get inflammations in my feet really really consistently um, it happens a lot it's um, all diets and I tried I try to avoid it and it's better than it used to be but it's still fairly uh, not, not so great um, so what I try to do is to find ways to train so that I can I can do that um, one of the things that I've taken to doing is um, using um, using Mikashi because that seems to be the easiest one for me um, is using Falling Curtain, which is a pose from the Mikashi Duon where you're standing on one foot with one knee up in the, with one knee up in the air and holding myself in balance on the Falling Curtain on my on my off foot that doesn't hurt happen to hurt that day and run my moon guards while I'm standing still on one foot. Um, this is uh, <laughs> challenging, <laughs> um, but it allows me to it allows me um, the balance and. To allows me to focus on my balance and engage my core while still working on stuff that allows that so that I'm so that I'm still working. Um, so for me, that's that's part of my <clears throat> that's part of it. Secondly, is to, to find ways to train when it's minus thirty. Um, sometimes uh, I, you know working in the garage downstairs is great, but if I'm on vacation, what am I going to do? I'm not going to go into work for an hour <laughs> and train. Um, so I, you know it's it's about finding ways to do it. So it's about Buying a good set of good set of heater gloves, buying some underlayer, Under Armour stuff, and training outside for 25 minutes at a time, and um, then coming back inside. Or because we all know how cold aluminum gets, um, what I actually have done is uh, I, I brought them with me today because I just got them. I wanted to show you guys here, but I I picked up a picked up a red oak Joe and a white oak Boken um, recently, and those they uh, they tend to get less cold. Than aluminum does, um, <laughs> so being able to put on a pair of leather gloves and wear those and use those outside as you're moving around, you warm up pretty quick, so you don't really have to worry about getting frozen super badly. But uh, you know, you can train and and do that. And uh, I get to practice great footwork while I'm outside because my my backyard is a minefield of of dog. Of uh, dog excrement, so um, I get to be very careful about where I put my feet. So um, that's part of it. So that that's what I that's how I work on them. Um, Scott, what about you? Uh, perseverance um, is making making it work, making it happen, um, having to persist through things and seeing results with it there. Um, for me, one of my my biggest things I I I like all, I like all of the forms. I like to kind of jump between the forms. For me, sticking to a specific form and polishing and making it and and perfecting the technique, getting that technique to uh, such a high level that I can bring it up on command and just make it flawless and effortless there. Um, so for me, my my perseverance is is sticking to something to polish it instead of going Makashi one day, Suresu the next, Atara the next, actually kind of sticking through it and just making sure, you know what, I want to really kind of work on, say, my Ataro this week. I'm going to train Ataro uh, for three of, three of the days, three or four of the days this week so that I am getting really, really... Um, Good, an actual good, uh, good understanding of a good, good actual technique with it. Um, yeah, that's for me there. Um, Eric, how about you? Is there a point? Oh. Yeah. So uh, one thing I want to get off my chest is the blade tips. I keep knocking them off, so 
uh, perseverance kind of starts by uh, seeing if I can keep doing these things by necessity in my garage and uh, not destroy the ends of my sabers. Uh, so, as a result, I've been uh, I've become an expert on uh, fixing uh, blade tips back on, and it's just a it's a nightmare, and it's so frustrating to have to do this. Like, okay, we'll just grab another saber and keep going, but uh, you know, so that's one thing. Uh, another thing, uh, I just had a, a, about two weeks of Oh, well, what I could only call a tropical bug. Um, yeah, it was fun going to, uh, to, to Florida and, and Disney and all that, but when I got sick on basically Tuesday uh, and still had the rest of the week to go, um, A, I stopped practicing uh, with that pool cue that I had found there as a saber. Um, I, I did do that on vacation. It was kind of funny. Um, but, um, yeah, it knocked me out. I'm still, I'm, I'm a little, I'm better now, but I'm still, I'm, Tired all the time. It's this thing knocked me right out. So, you know, perseverance lasts for your whole training, uh, from basically the start of what you're doing to the realization, and then found, you know, edifying of that, and for, for you know, going through little tiny missions in between. Uh, it's a, it's multi multi level, multifaceted. Uh, you know, you just got to get through it, um, and you know, something pops up. Uh, it's, I, I understand that it's it was not fun with that uh, that tropical bug. Yeah. It's kind of it, it, you know. I still have sore muscles uh, from that, um, but still got to pick up the saber and just like um, well, just like Donald once said, you know, just it'll do it standing still if he has to. So that's why I've been just uh, been slowly getting back into my routine, and um, I feel that I'm almost ready to uh, to lay some more videos down and start really get serious about this, but uh, to get through that uh, and, and still want to do this, I mean, I, <laughs> that was the worst bug I've had in years, gentlemen, and uh, yikes. Uh, so just another little recent um, thing, but uh, but yeah, to get from a, a barbarian to, uh, to where I am now, it, it took a lot of work <laughs> and a lot of, a lot of time. Definitely. What about you, uh, Gary? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I mean, this this is an interesting one for me again. Um, I mean, one thing that always kind of sticks in my mind with with perseverance specifically is the idea of not just practicing when it's convenient, and that's something everyone's touched upon. You know, I've got um, very little space at home. As I say, I've got a, a backyard that is probably I don't know eight feet by seven feet. It's not terribly big. Um, Ataru is going to be quite a challenge when I get there. Um, I've got a slightly larger front yard, which kind of just goes in a strip, so at least I can get a bit more distance with things. But, you know, I, I mean, for me personally, uh, you know, <laughs> I think this might make Michael chuckle, but, um, you know, when I'm brewing up, um, you know, a pot of tea, for example, what I call my Sith brain food, um, you know, what am I going to do while I'm stood there waiting for the kettle to boil? So what I've been doing recently is, you know, practicing the one-legged stances from Akashi. You know, the best bin expanse stance and the, you know, the the falling curtain, um, and just basically shifting from standing on one leg to standing on the other leg, um, and trying to then kind of drop my stance as low as I can go, which has to be said at the moment isn't very low. Um, but, you know, doing something whilst doing something else and waiting for it, you know, um, or, I mean, I've also got a, um, <laughs> it's ironic, you know, what, um, what you were saying before about, about um, Joe Staff, because I've got a Red Oak Joe Staff, I've got a Vulcan, and I've got a Saburi as well, so, um, you know, the Joe Staff is great in here because I've got a, I've got enough room to stand up, and if I'm careful, I don't hit the light. Um, so I've been doing kind of my staff spins uh, very, very slowly and very, very carefully in, in the room that I'm in at the moment. But for me, perseverance has taken um, something of a, a, a more sort of serious note as well, um, this year in particular, because um, a matter of weeks after being accepted into TPLA, we had a, a family tragedy and I lost my father. Um, so, for me, perseverance has been to keep going through that, regardless, and just sort of, um, 
basically just just keep going. And in some ways, it's helped to keep my sanity. So it's it's there's a very personal note to perseverance as well. Definitely, um, Michael. Um, what is perseverance for you? <laughs> Let me just say that uh, as a non-native uh, English speaker, it's not that easy to uh, to uh, keep them apart, um, persistence and perseverance. Um, let me try to, or, or I'll try to say it that way. Um, when I started working on my wobbly ne uh, legs. I, I always had problems uh, with having a good uh, firm s uh, stance and uh, I got some very helpful uh, advice from from the masters and I was always looking at my legs and I I always focused on, okay, keep the shin vertical, uh, take a larger step, and these things. And I always thought about it, uh, very persistent, uh, always thinking about that. And then reaching the point where you go out, do something, and realize afterwards, I didn't have to think about it. Uh, it it's there. Uh, I still have to work on it, but it is there. Um, that was, or that's it for me, and maybe I, I have it wrong. I don't know. But uh, this this um, way way uh, way you can say I have reached something that um, I always had to look at before. This is an expression of of perseverance for me. Did I get it right? <laughs> yeah, it's it's good. I mean, perseverance is different for everybody. I mean, we we all we all are going to push through in different ways, right? So that's 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 part of it. That's a good example. What about you, Robert? Uh, my perseverance starts um, when I was invited to the, the to the LX program. I was, I was 315 pounds, uncoordinated. Um, I hadn't worked out and probably consistently in. Uh, well, since 2005 when I left the military, so uh, I was exceptionally out of shape. And my perseverance comes in the fact that some days I get home and I just hurt. And some days I get home and all I want to do is curl up into a ball and throw my sabers out the window and be done with it. And, you know, uh, I look at examples that have been posted to our, our LX website, you know, and some of these videos that the other LXs have posted, just, you know, I'm, I, I look back and I'm like, what am I crying about? You know, this is me persevering. This is them fighting through things. You know, like Gary's story and, and, and Eric and Michael, they're pushing through issues in their lives, too. I'm not the only one that has problems. So why why can't they? So perseverance sometimes isn't just a a singular aspect. Sometimes it's shared. Sometimes that it's, it's, it's a group effort and I can take strength from the members of the group and and apply it to my life. So, and I, I I don't hurt nearly as much now when I get home, unless I let somebody beat on me for a while, and then I hurt. But um, it's perseverance. It's moving forward. It's being, it's being strong in the face of adversity. It's about being better. So uh, I guess the, we're that's the those are the three P's, and it was it was great talking to you guys about it. It's been it's been great for for us to kind of got to get into this chat with everybody here and I hope that everybody that's watching and will watch in the future um, enjoys the conversation. So what we actually wanted to finish with is um, is what we ourselves deem as our favorite training experience. What was it that from your perspective what did you have that was your most favorite experience? And we're going to we're going to discount automatically getting accepted into the LX program. You guys can't choose that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so this can be from any form of training that you've done um, in your life, uh, whether it be if you, you know, music training, soccer training, whatever it is. Because it's, it's about, it's about, because all of these things all, all um, kind of tie back to that. 
um, to these three Ps. I mean, every anybody who's training in anything, this is something that everybody will use. So we're going to start with, uh, let's start with Gary this time. And uh, Gary, what is your favorite training experience? Oh, that's, that's a tough one. <laughs> um, oh, I don't know if I can sort of single out one thing, really. I mean, I've trained in a lot of different things, you know. Um, I have a, a background in Taekwondo. I have a, a, a downgrade in that. So, obviously, you know, achieving my downgrade was, you know, amazing. I mean, that's more of a, a favorite achievement, I think, than a training experience. I think it's hard to narrow it down to one single thing, but I would, I would narrow it down to one in a sense group of things which which is probably slightly cheating but there you go um, <laughs> I would say for me the favorite thing when I'm training and this is something this applies to everything but I'm gonna apply this directly to my you know my experience in, in the LX program when I first start to learn something new like for example when I started on my synonymous saber staff form uh, when I start to learn something new, that really, really energizes me. I love doing that. I love learning new things. So, I mean, that is a, a real favorite of mine, is being allowed to learn something new. Somebody says, right, here's a challenge. Do this. You know, learn how to do this. Um, I would marry that up with the point at which I actually feel like I can do it. And again, I, I re, you know I, I relate back to um, the the um, the saber staff Um Actually, being able to do it and record it and watch that back, knowing that I'd done that, for me was just I mean that is my favorite part of of training is learning something new, working through it, and then that point at which even if it's rough, even if there's things I still need to polish, and there are things I still need to polish getting to that point where yeah I can do it now I can record it and watch it back and I and, and got it to some extent I think that's my favorite experience in training that's fine thank you Gary okay. um, I will jump randomly there to Robert uh, Robert what is your uh, favorite training experience um, I'm not sure if it's necessarily my favorite but my most proud moment I suppose uh, I'd been at Marine Boot Camp for 13 weeks, 13 weeks of long, nightmarish, no sleeping, running around, being yelled at all the time. And the day that we finished, I think, makes a huge difference. It's, it's a culmination of training. It's all of that coming out. It's becoming that definitive moment where all your training comes together. Um, but uh, as far as, like, a favorite, um, when I actually uh, picked up my saber and did the first line of uh, Makashi first trajectory, and I did it without thinking about it. It was smooth. Um, you, it, it just you you stop and you get to the end and you're like, holy, holy crap, did I just do that? And and uh, I wish I had recorded it because I never I never did have the opportunity. But that 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 moment was that aha moment. Nice. Uh, Eric, how about you? Oh, um, you know, our Makashi did sort of get an upgrade recently, but um, I, I was working on the uh, the sort of the, the phase one version of it uh, before that, and uh, Gary and I had done pretty much a two and a half, three hour hangout one night, um, going over literally every single move slowly and repeat and slowly, and by the next day, I actually had it down front to back on film. Whereas, you know, uh, uh, Michael uh, was doing the, uh, the the PowerPoint slides at the time, and he had just captured all the movements for, like, the, the second or the third sequence. <laughs> and, you know, it just slammed right through it, and I, and I actually got through it. And I, I, just like you said, Robert, I was kind of surprised. And uh, it's like, okay. And I'm not doing any of these live shows without... <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I got through it, and then you know, I thought, there it is. Uh, so I put another board down under the ladder so I wouldn't go any lower than that and uh, kept climbing, I guess, and uh, onward and upward. And now that we have everything broken down, yes. um, so getting through a Doolon and actually getting it on film to prove it was, uh, was, a, was a great feeling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. What have been doing? Michael, I believe you're last. 
or less of the panelists. <laughs> so, um, happy training moments. <laughs> When you extend the term training to the whole program and all we do there, then it's an easy one. It's uh, when I get a uh, nice work from Master Anonymous. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, for me, uh, it's uh, I, I've always wanted to move with a sword. It's it, since since I was a child, I always wanted to move with a sword and. There is very little that is more satisfying for me than having finished a doulon and, like like Robert said, standing there and feeling you have just moved through it and you have felt it and this is the moment of joy and that's why I love doulon and that's that's it for me. Yeah. And the very nice work from Master Anonymous, of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll go. I'll go next. Um, mine isn't. Um, mine isn't saber related. Um, I. This mine is training. I, I spend a lot of time training alone. Um, even I'm a, I'm a goaltender on a on a soccer team or soccer North American soccer so football. Um, and uh, I was the first season that I played eleven v eleven full field full field uh, ball. Um, I had possibly the worst distribution kick you'll ever have in your life. I could barely make it 25 yards, and it was horrible. I spent four days a week, two hours a night after work with probably seven or eight balls kicking directly toward a uh, kicking directly toward a baseball backstop, so that I had something to catch it, so I didn't have to run forever to go and get the balls. Um, after about three or four weeks of training, so we're probably looking at what a three, four thousand kicks at that time. My leg was really sore. Um, I lined myself up for a kick and I booted it clear over the backstop. It was probably about 50, 55 yards away from me. Um, at that point, then I knew that it's in me to do it, and that's that's the big thing. That's the aha moment of I can get that done. That's that's. I can do it. I know that I can. And it went exactly where I wanted to, and it was, had the height I wanted it, and it was perfect. It was like the perfect kick you'll ever see. I have yet to replicate it, and it's been two years. Um, <laughs> but I did it that one time. It was great. So, and that's and that's what I that's that's what you strive for is that is that aha moment when you're training is that one thing where you can you can hold on to it and say, I know that I can do it because I've done it before. Um. Mine, um, my favorite training moment is actually uh, more towards geared towards the the fun aspect that we have of it. Um, I think my favorite training moment I've ever had. Uh, I was actually I was with Dave. We were trying to film the Kessel Run, and uh, I don't know what it was that day, but no matter how much we would try and tighten our blades, we'd be going through the Kessel Run. Hit, 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 hit. Blade flies out, and just in the middle of it, and just the amount of times we stopped, dumbfounded, just looking at the saber, going, "I just cranked that in." I don't understand what's happened. We we laughed so hard on it. We it took us probably like three times as long to try and get the fil like any of the filming done for it there. But uh, it was it was just it was hilarious. Um, yeah, that's my my best one. Well, I think that uh, we are we are at, out of time. We're actually a couple minutes over. So thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Um, Eric, thanks for thanks for coming. Uh, Gary, thanks for sharing your stories. Michael, Robert, thank you very much for coming and talking with us and sharing um, on behalf of everybody here and Master Anonymous and Warnock and the rest of the TPLA crew. Thank you for watching, and may the force be with you. Good night. <laughs>